Okay, good afternoon. So, uh, this is our 10th lecture and uh, in the previous lecture we already started our discussion on the flow resign maps and today also we will continue the discussion on flow resigns only. Uh, but in our yesterday's discussion we have specifically taken the flows in the horizontal pipes. Okay, And in horizontal pipes we have seen all the uh, three types of flow situations. One was gas liquid, second was liquid solid and third was gas solid. Okay. Uh, now we will try to see uh, specifically uh, the flow resigns particularly in gas liquid resign only first for vertical pipes and then we will also try to see some of the flow resigns for uh, vertical as well as horizontal pipes. Okay. So in case of uh, vertical pipes uh, uh, some of the flow resigns which we observed in case of horizontal pipes, these are missing. Okay. Particularly if you talk about, in case of horizontal uh, flow, we have, we had one flow resign which we called as stratified flow resign. Okay. But in case of vertical situation, if you consider that co-flow of liquids is, uh, uh, co-flow of phases is happening in the vertical upward direction, then flow inertia has to be so strong that it is not allowing the gravity force to dominate and to settle the uh, heavier phase at the bottom. So that's why we will not be finding any sort of stratification in our uh, system. Okay. So that is the reason stratified and stratified wavy resigns are actually kind of missing over here. So here Typical flow resigns which you can see are shown with this schematic representation. So first one is actually bubbly flow. So in case of bubbly flow, what will be happening? This outside is nothing but our continuous liquid phase and when all these black dots are nothing but representing the gas bubbles. So small, small gas bubbles if we have present in the system and if all these bubbles are dispersed in the system so then we will be having the bubbly flow resign okay and typically uh, the necessary condition for the bubbly flow if you see the necessary condition for the bubbly flow will be a little bit higher liquid mass uh, flow rate so here if you see this is the resign map we have in this resign map along the Epsisa we have JL. JL is nothing but volumetric flux or superficial velocity of the liquid and along ordinate we have volumetric flux or superficial velocity of the gas. Okay. So typically if you see the bubbly flow resign we are finding in this area and this area is characterized by uh, somewhat you can see in this particular area your liquid flow rate is high and gas flow rate is actually very very Okay, so if your gas flow rate is low, then you will be finding that gas will not be able to come as a continuous entity in the pipe, rather it will be coming in the form of small, small discrete entities. Okay, and considering the fact that within our control volume or within our system of observation, which is pipe in this case, majority of the fraction is actually covered by the continuous phase and we have small amount of uh, gaseous phase present in the form of bubbles. So that's why in this particular system we will also be having actually low volume fraction. Is this one clear? So when we are talking about the bubbly flow, in case of bubbly flow, volume fraction of gas phase will be low. So particularly when I am referring to the low volume fraction, I have to specifically mention the gas phase because liquid phase is having dominant volume fraction in this example. Okay. And typically, because your bubbles are uh, so much close to each other, so you will be finding that there will be interparticle interactions. Okay. So interparticle interactions means one bubble can combine with the other bubble and form a bigger bubble and then second situation can be that say if you have a larger sized bubble, then if it is <coughs> subjected to some reason where one portion is having, one portion of the bubble is having some higher velocity, other portion is actually adjacent to the lower velocity zone, then there will be some relative motion between the bubbles. 
and that relative motion between larger bubbles, so there will be high chances of the relative motion within the bubble volume, particularly for large sized bubbles. Okay. So typically in large sized bubbles, what can happen due to the relative motion between them, there can be breakage of the bubble into small, small entities. Okay. So in this particular design, we will be having low volume fraction of the gaseous phase and at the same point of time, we will be having actually uh, breaking and making of the bubble. So like larger bubbles will be breaking into smaller satellite bubbles and smaller bubbles may join with each other to form the bigger bubbles. Okay. Now, in this system, if I keep the liquid flow rates at the almost same conditions, but if I increase the, if I increase the, what I do, if I increase the gas flow rate, okay. So, if I increase the gas flow rate, then what will be happening? The frequency of the small, small bubble will be increasing. Moreover, at the same point of time, their size will also increase, okay. So, we will find some situation where number of these bubbles are actually merging with each other and forming a big bubble. So, this is nothing but a big bubble of gas phase and this gas phase bubble while it is rising with the liquid phase, then in this scenario what will happen? Behind this bigger bubble, we will be finding the formation of strong vertical structures, strong vortices, okay. And these vortices will lead to formation of large number of smaller, smaller bubbles at the wake of this uh, larger sized bubble. So, this particular design is called as a slug flow. Is this one clear? So, what we have in case of a slug flow design, in case of a slug flow design, my volume of the vapor bubble is so large that this length scale of the bubble is almost equal to the internal diameter of the pipe. Okay, so you can see there is small thin liquid film. Okay, this is thin liquid film, but the thickness of the liquid film is so small that considering the neglect, uh, negligible thickness, I can say the diameter of the bubble is almost compared to the internal diameter of the pipe. So, this type of bubble with larger size is something which is popularly called as a tailor bubble or it is also called as bullet shaped bubble. Okay. So, its front is nose is in the form of a shape of a bullet. So, that is why it is also called as bullet shaped bubble. Uh, what are the different shapes of the bubble possible in different multi-phase flow situations? These we will be talking about in the next lecture. Okay. So, whenever we will be considering the shapes of the individual particles, that is the part of the next lecture. But over here, just to give you an idea, a bubble which is of larger size and having shape identical to that of a bullet and uh, its length scale is almost comparable to the diameter of the pipe that is called as a Taylor bubble. Okay. And I told you that when Taylor bubble is nothing but now a larger mass. Okay. So, when a larger mass of one fluid will be penetrating through the other fluid, then obviously at the wake region, we will be finding formation of strong vertical structures. And these strong vertical structures will lead to breakup of large number of small, small bubbles, which are called as actually satellite bubbles. So, these are called as satellite bubbles forming at the tail of this slug bubble. Okay. Is this point clear? So, this particular design is called as slug flow design. Then, further what will be happening? If you further, so slug flow you will be observing nearly in the zone of moderate values of the gas flux. But whenever you will go for gas flux, with slightly more higher values, at that point you will be finding that these number of slugs will try to join with each other. So, what you have done? You have further increased the gas flow rate. Okay. So, when gas flow rate is further increased, then these slugs, now the slug frequency will be high. So, once slug frequency is high, these slugs will try to interfere with each other. Because what happens? A simple example you can consider, if you have say one person moving ahead, okay, 
and if one person is running say in terms of automobile let's talk about that a uh, number of cars are actually running in a uh, are moving in a row so whatever the amount of drag first car is experiencing if i keep my gap between first and second car in such a way so that the wake of the first car is not interfering with the second car but it is just bypassing and moving over the first car in that case what you will be finding that the amount of drag experienced by the second car will be less so in the similar way if you consider that one flux one bubble is actually one tailor bubble is moving and if at faster frequency another bubble is coming from the back so first bubble has already displaced the liquid in order to penetrate through it so second bubble will face ease in that particular path and because of that it will try to get slightly higher velocity and it will try to merge with the first bubble okay so in this merging phenomenon we will be finding that we will be having a larger chunk of gaseous phase at the center so these particular chunks of gaseous phase at the center and then number of small small bubbles present in the entire system so this is a very chaotic flow situation it is very chaotic flow situation it is called as churn so churn flow once again it's a very kind of random phenomenon you cannot clearly understand and determine its dynamics because you will not be able to define that when a big chunk is coming when a small bubble is coming very very random phenomenon when you are having that is this is kind of a transitional resign from slug to annular okay so slug is entering to churn and then it is transferring to annular so this is kind of a transitional resign and in case of annular resign what you will be finding now your gas flow rate is so high your gas flow rate is so high that entire central portion is actually occupied by the gas so here you can see in the center you have a gaseous core and liquid is actually moving across the walls and unlike the horizontal case if i take the cross section of the pipe in this particular cross section now if i see the thickness of this film so that will be almost now uniform because now gravity is not leading to any asymmetry in this scenario so that's why this film thickness will be symmetric but this film will be having large number of waves present over it okay so typically when churn to annular flow transition is happening then we will be finding that the amplitude of these waves will be large and on contrary when flow has become extremely uh, gaseous flow has become extremely large then that will try to even reduce the amplitude of these waves which are forming at the interface is this point clear and in this annular flow resign you will be finding that of course the interface is not a perfectly straight line you will be having some small surface waves and because of these surface waves there can be a break up of small small liquid particles and these liquid particles will be entering into the central gaseous core so particularly in annular flow resign you will be finding that some of the particle can once again merge with the liquid so some of the droplets can again uh, join and merge with this film and some of the droplets can actually some of the droplets can break from the film and enter into the gas is this point clear all are clear with this idea and then finally we have dispersed phase so in case of dispersed phase we have actually extremely high velocities okay so because of these extremely high velocities you will be finding that uh, this gas phase is having extremely high as sorry gas phase is within the complete spectrum but uh, uh, liquid phase is at extremely high so here we will be finding that almost both the phases can be seen intermingled in a very chaotic way with each other and uh, uh, that's why we will be finding here two types of dots few dots are actually 
solid dots so solid dots are representing nothing but the gas bubbles and then few are open circles so open circles are representing the corresponding liquid phase and also in the surrounding uh, majorly we will be finding the presence of liquid but there can be like almost comparable volume fractions of both the phases present in the system okay and this particular flow resign map which i have shown over here which is in terms of the superficial velocities this is for an air water mixture in a vertical 2.5 cm diameter tube okay now so you can see the experimental photographs for better visualization so here you can see this is the case of a bubbly flow then this is my this is also a very big slug okay so large slug and then this slug is entering into a churn flow resign and then finally i i am having nothing but a angular flow resign okay so here you can see these photographs are for a vertical 25.4 mm diameter pipe okay so here you can see you don't have a bubble of single size so all the bubbles are of different size so this is a very small bubble this is a slightly intermediate size this is a larger size bubble and here you can see this small bubble and this big bubble they are kind of trying to coalesce with each other then in this portion there is very chaotic scenario so it means some of the bubbles are attaching some of the bubbles are detaching from each other okay and then you can see when you increase the gas flow rate then these bubbles are merging and forming a big slug and behind this big slug then you are having a larger number of particles but the frequency of these slug is actually less and if you further increase the gas flow rate then you can see the now the size of the slug you see so much bigger size slug and behind this slug of what is this black colored highly intense uh, portion so this is nothing but strong population of the satellite bubbles because larger is the size more strong is the formation of vortices wake okay so that's why in this wake you will be finding a large population of the bubbles present in the system okay and then of course in the churn resign you will be finding intermediate slug and then large population of the bubbles okay and ultimately this is converting into annular flow resign so why this annular flow resign is looking like this because this is a view at the center plane and if your depth of view is large then it will be able to capture the multiple planes in a single image okay so because of these multiple planes you will be finding bubbles present front back and at multiple planar locations okay so that's why if your uh, uh, depth of field or uh, uh, this frame width is actually slightly large then you will be finding uh, a number of bubbles will be present in a single image uh, image and that's why we are having this so much bubble population present at the center okay is this point clear now you can see this is uh, air water flow images for 50.8 mm diameter pipe so when you are having a slightly larger diameter pipe so once you are increasing the diameter of the pipe your phases are getting more amount of cross section available to interfere with each other so that's why you can see now the situation is even more chaotic okay so earlier the interfaces were clearly separable but now in interfaces there is actually more chaoticness present in the overall flow results okay and typically these are uh, the photographs for air water system in a 10.2 cm vertical pipe and in this case you can see the extreme left figure is having smaller number of bubbles and bubbles are kind of separated from each other so in this scenario volume fraction is almost close to 1% then central portion is where volume fraction is close to 4.5% and then you have more intermittent resign which is having now the coalescence of the bubbles is taking place so this is close to volume fraction of 
15%. Is this one clear? And how you can determine the volume fraction by using the experimental method. So if you recall the first lecture I have given you one simple idea that if in your pipe you have two valves, one valve is at the bottom portion and one valve is at the top portion. What you need to do? You need to simultaneously close the valves. If you simultaneously close the valves, after certain amount of time, what will be happening? There will be stratification because of the gravity, so heavier phase will be at the bottom and lighter phase will be at the top. So you can measure how much volume is occupied by lighter phase, how much is occupied by the heavier phase. And then accordingly you can calculate total uh, each volume divided by total volume and that is nothing but a by total volume that is volume fraction. Okay, so that is one of the simplest method for uh, getting some estimate of the approximate estimate of the volume fraction at an uh, bulk level. Okay, now this another flow resign map uh, is shown over here. This resign map is given by Hemet and Roberts, and uh, uh, this is for flow in 3.2 centimeter diameter tube. And this particular resign map is having one benefit that it is validated for both air water flow at atmospheric pressure and steam water flow at high pressures. Okay, so it means that this particular resign map, and also interestingly, you will observe that the abscissa of this resign map includes the liquid momentum flux. It is not including mass flux or superficial velocity, but it is including the momentum flux. What is the meaning of momentum flux? If you use mass flux and multiply it with the superficial velocity, that will be nothing but our momentum flux. So here you can see rho L into J L will be our mass flux and one more J L whenever it is multiplied, it will become a momentum flux. So rho L J L square in kg per second meter square and uh, similarly rho G J G square we have along uh, abscissa. So number of flow resigns are the same bubbly, bubbly, slug, slug and annular and one interesting benefit of this particular flow resign is the, uh, this particular flow pattern map is that it is applicable for both the arrangements. It is applicable for air water system and it is applicable for steam water system. So it means that it is applicable for both adiabatic as well as diabetic situations. Okay. It means that I can also apply this flow resign map for vertical boiler tube. So what happens in a boiler tube? In a boiler tube, basically your volume fraction will not remain constant. Volume fraction will keep on changing continuously along the length of the tube. Okay. Because at the entry point of the tube, there will be pure liquid and at the exit point, there will be close to pure vapor. And in between the tube, what we will be having? We will be having the combination of liquid and vapor. Okay, So that's why whenever we will be talking about this particular uh, uh, resign map, from this resign map, actually we can get the idea of mass quality. And if you take any point on this resign map, so corresponding to this resign map, you are knowing the liquid momentum and the gas momentum flux. And at the same point of time, if you simply uh, divide with the JL and JG, then you will be knowing the mass velocity is mass flux. So if you know the mass flux, you can determine the mass quality. So it means over this entire plot, we can determine the distribution of the mass quality present in the system. So if we are able to determine the mass quality present in the system, then when we are having the phase change phenomenon, in case of phase change phenomenon, we will be finding that when we are moving from one end to other end of the pipe, I am not having constant volume fraction or constant mass quality, but mass quality is actually increasing. Okay, So that's why this particular flow design map can be even applied for phase change situations and particularly uh, if I am, I am having a boiler in which uh, the tubes are actually oriented in vertical orientation. So then 
from boiler drum whenever the flow is coming down and then again rising so there i can predict actually the flow pattern depending upon the local mass quality as well okay all are clear with this point now we have another interesting flow regime and this particular flow regime just now as i told you that if we talk about a boiler tube then what will be happening in a boiler tube there will not be constant mass fraction mass fraction will keep on changing change so what we are now considering we are considering the steam water flow in a vertical boiler tube so consider this is a vertical boiler tube so typically what happens in a boiler tube this particular through this particular periphery of the tube what we are doing we are adding heat we are adding okay and then we have either natural circulation loop or we have pumped system in order to allow the water to flow through this okay so at the entry point up to this location i am having a pure liquid so up to this point i am having over here nothing but a pure liquid okay as i will be moving further i will be finding that from the surface of the tube there will be formation of small small vapor bubbles and of course because of the flow these bubbles will be actually entering into the core so here i am having initially the size of the bubble is very small and when number of the bubbles are joining together and these are forming larger sized bubble so this particular case here we are calling as nothing but our okay when we move further in the downstream of the tube length there we will be finding that these bigger sized bubbles will be merging with each other and these will be forming a gaseous core or a steam core vapor core so this is now becoming taking the shape of a slug flow design okay and once we are finding that we have sufficient fraction of the gaseous medium present in the system then that gaseous medium will be actually entering into the center so here we have nothing but a gaseous core okay and outside of the gaseous core we have actually liquid and this liquid is now attached to the wall is this one clear so this particular design is called as and okay ye jo gas wala medium hai beech mein kya hai but heat up रिस्ट्रिक्शन solid wall restriction so because of the least restriction path bubbles will try to come towards the center okay and at the center actually they will form the gaseous core so this point is clear that up to this case majority of the heat transfer whatever is happening that is because of the boiling from the surface of the tube on contrary once you enter into the annular flow regime in case of annular flow regime what will be happening now you have this liquid film and this liquid film is actually moving in vertical direction at the same point of time you have this clear gas liquid interface so from this interface also we will be having what what happens at the interface there are two phenomenon one is boiling second is evaporation boiling and what is the difference between the two surface and what is the fundamental difference between boiling and evaporation when my pressure is equal to 
vapor pressure, saturation pressure, and in that case, the change of phase is happening because of the temperature difference. Okay, so temperature of heater surface is greater than the saturation temperature. So because of that, what phenomenon is happening at a given pressure that is called as boiling. But in case of evaporation, what will be happening? Yes, dew point is for condensation, but for evaporation, what will be happening? If your vapor pressure is less than the saturation pressure, in that case, what will be happening at a given temperature condition? Then what will be happening? In order to come to the equilibrium, it means vapor pressure will try to reach to the saturation pressure condition. So, it will try to create more and more vapors. Do you know if I keep a, say this room is not heated, but here if I keep a bucket of water, what will be happening after two days? Whole water will be gone. So, what is the phenomenon? I am not heating that. Evaporation. Okay. You have to know these difference. So, please, if you are not knowing the fundamentals of uh, basic courses, then it will be difficult to understand. Okay. So, what I am saying is that in this particular regime up to the slug flow, we will be having dominant mode of heat transfer as because of the boiling process. But after this phenomenon, you will be finding that we will be having even strong evaporation also from the interface. Okay. So, we will be having mixed effect. Boiling is also happening. So, you can see that in this liquid film, small, small bubbles are coming. Bubbles are not coming at very high frequency. Small, small bubbles are coming because in order for bubble to generate, there should be some residence time also. And now, once your majority of the tube is actually filled by the gaseous phase, gaseous phase is having lesser density. Okay, so, it will take more space. Once it will take more space, it will try to displace the liquid and move the liquid at faster pace. Okay, so, once liquid is moving at the faster pace, then here we will be finding that rather than boiling, we will be having evaporating mode also as a dominant. Okay, and in this zone, you can see that because from this liquid film, there can be detachment of droplets. So, small, small droplets are also present in the gaseous medium. Okay. And once after this point, so when your liquid film has actually completely vanished, after that point you will be finding that mist flow or dispersed flow situation where liquid droplets are actually dispersed in the gaseous core. Gaseous gas has become as a or vapor has become as a continuous phase and in that small small liquid droplets are there. Now, further if I am adding the heat, what will happen to this vapor? It will try to superheat. So, once vapor is becoming superheat, then the superheated vapor will transfer the heat to this small liquid droplets and ultimately all the droplets will convert into the vapor phase. Okay. So, this is how we will be getting the pure vapor after this moment. Is this one clear? So, all the liquid droplets which are present in the form of mist in the vapor medium now, these will not be interacting with the wall. Okay. So, because of wall heat transfer, these are not changing to the vapor phase. But what these are doing, once walls are in contact with the vapor, it means the vapor phase was in the, has reached the saturation limit. Once it has reached the saturation limit, after that point, if you still add the heat, what will happen to it? There will be superheating of the vapor. So, once it is having superheating, it means this vapor portion will be having more temperature in comparison to the liquid droplets, because liquid droplets can only exist at the saturation temperature condition, okay, at saturation limit. So, there will be transfer of heat from the superheated vapor to this liquid droplets and ultimately these liquid droplets will convert into the vapor phase. All are clear with this idea? So, this is the typical uh, representation or generation of different flow resigns present in a system. Now, whatever the previous map I discussed, 
because previous map is actually taking care of the it is taking care of the local mass quality local mass fraction then if i take any cross section any portion of this tube so depending upon the local mass quality i can plot it on the previous map and then accordingly i can predict i will be having which type of flow is at present okay now similar to this uh, uh, flow through a tube there is one experimental snapshot given over here but this is not inside a tube this is on outside a tube so you have a tube and around this tube you are allowing the saturated liquid to flow so say you are pumping saturated liquid above this tube so here what will be happening we are calling this as convective boiling around a heated rod why convective boiling there are two boilings one is cool one is flow so here we are allowing the saturated liquid to flow across this tube that's why i am using the term convective boiling okay so here you can see in the initial portion this liquid is only getting heated and then after that you will see that small small bubbles are actually coming at the surface and then these bubbles are further growing in size okay once these bubbles are further growing in size these are trying to form a vapor blanket over the tube is this one clear so that we are calling it as nothing but a convective boiling around the heated rod so whatever the phenomenon i have shown you over here almost similar will be the phenomenon in this scenario but it is happening in the outside periphery of the tube okay then we have a horizontal boiler tube now tube can be in horizontal orientation so if i have a horizontal boiler tube then what will be happening this is the pure liquid after that bubbly flow now my gravity is acting in this direction so it will favor the stratification so once it is favoring the stratification so we will be finding that bubble volume will be first trying to move near the top portion of the tube okay and then these multiple bubbles near the top portion will be joining with each other and below these we will be finding the smaller smaller bubbles okay so this is called as plug flow and when these plugs are becoming or growing in size then we are calling it as slug flow and corresponding to this the cross section is also given so in case of a vertical tube cross section will always be symmetric okay but here because of the phase stratification you will be finding a symmetry at the cross section so that is something which is actually shown in this particular picture and then after slug in case of horizontal tube we will be finding that this top liquid film will be vanishing immediately okay so as top liquid film is actually vanishing immediately so because of this we will be only having the liquid film at the bottom portion so this is the cross section so at the top it is not actually touching and then we will be finding that number of waves are coming at this film so we are calling it as wave flow okay and after this point we will be having actually strong gaseous core and in this gaseous core because of these waves there will be break up of the film into the form of small small droplets and these droplets along with the gas will be moving in upward direction and while these are moving these droplets after again rejoining with the surface of the tube they can form a very very thin film of the liquid so that's why we are calling it as nothing but annular flow is happening over here so there is film but very very extremely thin film okay and then after this point i will be having nothing but uh, near the top portion this tube wall will become completely dry and uh, uh, near the bottom portion we will be having very thin film and after some time this will also when is and we will get a complete over this okay so it means that in case of horizontal pipe flow resigns are almost the same with the addition of this new wavy flow resign and apart from that uh, what we are finding apart from this we are finding that the distribution of the phases is not actually symmetric so this is asymmetric over here okay so i think these are wrongly quoted over here sir so, intermittent is still time in the 
Yes. So intermittent dry region is basically when these plugs have merged together. So these have formed a larger gaseous chunk. So this larger gaseous chunk is actually causing the dry spot over here where there is no liquid in contact with the top wall. So that is called as intermittent dry region. But once we are having these waves, then this gas because of the interfacial shear will lead to formation of large population of droplets within the gaseous core. And when these large population of droplets will strike with the top wall, these will form a very, very thin liquid film. So that we are calling it as a envelope film. Okay, is this one clear? So basically this new film formation is coming because of the detachment of the droplets from the bottom film which are again attaching to the solid wall. Top. Yes, again these will be vaporized. So that's why again you can see that after this annular flow resign also we are having this dry spot over here and then after this we have actually a pure uh, uh, film only at the bottom portion. So top wall is almost dry at that point. Okay. Now, whatever these flow resigns we have studied, ultimately the major classification is well dispersed and well separated flow resign. Because whenever I will be applying either the analytical methods or the numerical methods, if I am looking the problem at the gross level, averaged conditions, I am not looking into the minute details of the phase distribution, then ultimately my analysis will either involve the homogeneous modeling approach or it will involve the two fluid approach. Is this point clear? So that is why what we will try to do, we will try to classify majority of these flows either as separated flows or dispersed flows. Okay. So you can see the first class has separated flows. So in separated flows, any type of film which is adjacent to the wall and if I have other phase which is present above that film, that is the case of a pure separated flow. Okay. And this type of configurations can be observed in liquid film present in the gaseous medium or gaseous film present in the liquid medium. Okay. So, situations can be both. Then the applications of this area, so first liquid film present in the gas, this we observe in film wise condensation. So if you have a surface, over the surface there is a thin film of liquid and in the surrounding of that film of liquid we have nothing but the gaseous core present. And that gaseous core is then penetrating heat through that liquid film to the cold surface and it is actually creating more condensation. Okay. So that is nothing but a film wise condensation process, what we study in our basic heat transfer. And the second system, when I say that gas film present in the liquid medium, this is typically the case of a film boiling. What happens in case of film boiling, if you have a heated surface, over the entire heated surface you, you have a vapor film. And outside this you have nothing but your liquid phase. So that is the case of a gas film in the liquid. So means film boiling. Then we can come to annular flow. So in case of annular flow, we can have liquid core and gas film. So liquid is at the center and gas is at the boundary. Or we can have gas at the core and liquid at the boundary. And typically liquid core and gas film will be observed in case of film boiling. So if you consider film boiling inside a tube, then what will be happening? The entire heated surface should be covered with the gaseous phase. So that is why I will be having a gas film at the boundary and at the center I will be having liquid core. On contrary, if you talk about gas core and liquid film. So where at the core you have gaseous phase and at the boundary you have liquid. So this type of phenomena typically observed in case of boilers. So boiler tube we have seen in the previous cases. So there, what is there? In the center we have a gaseous film and in the outside we have a. Okay. 
Then third is jet flow. So say you have a pipe. From this pipe, some liquid is coming out. So this is a liquid jet and outside I have a gaseous medium. Or I can have reverse situation that I am having a gaseous jet which is coming out and outside I have a liquid medium. Okay. So this type of situation we see in atomization. So what happens inside an IC engine? We have a fuel injector where liquid jet is coming out and in the surrounding we have a gaseous medium. So till the point that jet has not split it into droplets, till that point this is nothing but a separated flow. But once the jet has formed small small droplets then we cannot call it as a separate. So typically what happens in case of jet automation? So you will be finding if this is your pipe, from this pipe we will be having a big spray and up to certain length this spray will be remaining as a pure liquid and after this point then this will be breaking in the form of small small droplets. So I am talking about separated flow only up to this enzyme because after this enzyme actually these liquid droplets are now dispersed in the gases. Okay. So, it means that if you have to analyze the fuel injector okay, during the atomization process, then the portion which is very close to the injector that you can analyze with the help of separated flow modeling approach and once this liquid film has actually broken into small small liquid droplets and these droplets are dispersed in the gaseous phase, then you have to uh, analyze that using the dispersed flow model. Okay. Second can be gas jet in liquid. So this is typically observed in case of jet condenser. So jet condenser is nothing but a situation where what you are doing, you are allowing the vapor jet to enter into a liquid medium. So that when this vapor jet will come in direct contact with the liquid medium, it will actually condense and form a Okay. So that is called as a jet condenser. Then second classification, we have seen the mixed or transitional flows. Okay. So mixed or transitional flows typically cap, slug, churn, turbulent flows. So the, here we have seen the gas pockets present in the liquid medium and this type of situation you can see in uh, sodium boiling in actually forced convection process. And uh, then we have bubbly annular flow. So in case of bubbly annular flow, whatever this liquid film is present, in this liquid film also we have actually gas bubbles present. So one we have called a simple annular flow. So in case of simple annular flow, there will be a liquid film but there are no, no bubbles present in that liquid film. On contrary, if within the liquid film there is presence of small small gaseous bubbles, so here also gas and these black colored entities are also gas. This is called as bubbly annular flow. So in case of bubbly annular flow, this we will be finding in evaporators with wall nucleation. So we can have, we will be having nucleation effect also and we will be having evaporation effect also. So when both the effects are present like from here also phase change is happening, from here also phase change is happening. Okay. So from wall also bubbles are actually nucleating. So once from walls bubbles are nucleating, then we will be calling it as evaporator with wall nucleation. Okay. Then third is droplet annular flow. So in case of droplet annular flow, uh, within the gaseous core I have droplets and this is nothing but a pure liquid film. So here it is a pure liquid film. So this scenario we can see in case of steam generators, like in case of our boilers. Okay. Then bubbly droplet annular flow. So bubbly droplet annular flow means both the previous configurations are superimposed. Okay. And this is typically the scenario in boiling nuclear reactor channel. Because in case of nuclear reactor, your heat flux is so high that there will be evaporation also and there will be ball nucleation also. Okay. So because of this, we will be finding in case of nuclear reactors, we will be having bubbly droplet and majority of the 
nuclear reactors are actually operated in this resign only because in this resign actually two effects are together assisting in the heat transfer process. One is wall nucleation and second is evaporation. So that's why this is considered as the one of the efficient method of heat transfer because here two effects are actually combining and most of the nuclear reactors are actually operated in this particular design. And whenever nuclear reactors are operated, it is a uh, strong care is given that we should not have dry out situation. Because if there will be dry out situation, then there will be formation of the hot spot immediately and there can be material failure. Because in case of nuclear reactor, the amount of heat flux is actually very, very high. Okay. Then we have the third design, which is completely dispersed flow. So completely dispersed flow, one is bubbly flow, gas bubbles which are present in liquid and this is typically seen in case of chemical reactors. So you want to do different reactions within with the liquid, so you can, you will be operating in the bubbly flow resign because here you will be having actually what is required for reactions to happen high surface area high contact high interfacial area so if you have small small entities present dispersed then you will be having actually high interfacial area okay and second is droplet flow it means pure gas core so continuous phase is gas and liquid droplets are present. So this is typically seen in case of spray cooling applications. Okay, so what happens in spray cooling? In the surrounding everywhere you have air and what you are doing? You are spraying liquid on some particular force. Okay, so that is the case of a spray cooling. And third is particulate flow when solid particles are either present in gas or liquid. So this is used for transportation of powders. Okay, so typically whatever the number of flow resigns we are having broadly we can classify these in three categories few are mixed few are fully separated and few are fully dispersed resign now depending upon these configurations actually we have to decide that what type of models uh, or what type of modeling approaches actually we have to use for solving these flow situations is this one clear so we'll stop at this point and uh, in the next lecture, we will specifically talk about the shapes of individual particles present in the multiphase flow situation.